Uh, welcome everyone to the 2020 Soft Meetup. Uh, I'm glad that uh, all of you are SVP for the event and uh, we're very happy to organize uh, uh, this particular topic on this uh, chapter of 2020 Soft Meetup. Uh, we have been uh, uh, we have been planning to do this meetup from uh, past month and uh, have been uh, doing a lot of dry runs for this meetup. Uh, and uh, finally, because it's, uh, it was uh, very difficult uh, to accommodate such a huge topic in just a one hour session. But I think we are going to, uh, you can just keep a close eye on the Chandigarh Moonsoft meetup community and we are going to have subsequent sessions we will be elaborating and telling you more about uh, the runtime fabric on self-managed Kubernetes. Uh, let me just briefly start with the introductions. Uh, myself, Abhni Sharma, I'm a service movie manager in Kalis Consulting and uh, having delivered multiple news of projects in multiple domains over the past few years. And along with me, we have Kajal Agrawal. She is a solution architect in Kalis Consulting. Uh, she has managed from uh, you know, a small level to an enterprise level integration projects and uh, have been delivering them for the past couple of years. Um, she comes from a Java background and also has uh, a lot of Salesforce experience. So uh, uh, me and Kajil have been organizing uh, in of meetings. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and next I wanna come to the speakers and I wanna thank uh, uh, first of all, Deepankar Sonu, who is a solution consultant in Kalis Consulting for volunteering with us in this meetup. And also uh, Mehek Garg, uh, is a senior solution consultant in Kalis Consulting. Um, I thank both of you for uh, being the speakers and being, and volunteering for the Chandigarh Moonsoft community. Uh, along with us, uh, so basically when we were preparing for this meetup, we had uh, there were there were more uh, you know more of our friends uh, within the community who were actually uh, you know uh, helping us curate this meetup on how to actually uh, you know uh, have this meetup delivered in one hour just have the maximum uh, information and knowledge that we can deliver in the period of one hour so um, we also have Himanshu Sethi who's also a solution consultant consulting who joined us and will be helping us. Uh, you know, on the chat box, on uh, a few of the questions uh, that we're going to ask. Also, we will also be having uh, in the team Ishalveer Singh, who is also going to be uh, the part of uh, of uh, this, uh, our group when we were preparing for this meetup. And along with that, we also have Manjeet Sen, who is also a solution architect in and uh, will be, uh, you know, answering a few of the questions that uh, you know you all guys will be having in the chat box. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'm very glad to be uh, uh, to have all of you uh, join joining this meetup. Uh, just a couple of more things I want to tell about the safe harbor statement that uh, this is strictly uh, this session is strictly for the learning purposes, and uh, we are not promoting any organization uh, through this uh, meetup. It's absolutely strictly for learning and the use cases for your business. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's more or less about it. So uh, without wasting any time, I'll pass over the mic to uh, Mehik, uh, who's going to kickstart uh, the session on RDF. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Avnish. So I guess we have already done with the introductions. Hello, everyone. So I'm Mehik. Um, without further ado, let's just get into the topic. So today's um, agenda of this meeting is RTF installation on self-managed Kubernetes. So along with that, we will be covering topics like mules of deployment. We will come on to the RT, uh, RTF and its architecture. Then we'll read br brief about the Kubernetes because RTF is based upon Kubernetes. So we'll go through a brief about that. And then we'll come up with the RTF benefits and its limitation. Finally, we'll move on to the different R RTF operating models and uh, we'll session with RTF installation on self-managed Kubernetes. Let me just get started with it. So um, if you can see, we have uh, we have a lot of different mules of deployment models um, available as of now, and most of you have been using some of them at least. So 
the most famous one is cloud hub where your control plane as well as your runtime plane both lies on the anypoint cloud hub platform so um, um i guess everybody uh, knows the feature which is provided by uh, the cloud hub deployment model so in the cloud hub deployment model because your runtime plane as well as the worker plane lies on the cloud uh, you have something called as workers which are uh, where all your applications are being deployed and for each application you have a specified work so in cloud hub we get features like isolation application isolation through workers we get the feature of zero downtime because cloud hub itself takes care of managing your applications in case of uh, worker failure it will automatically deploy a new worker and it also offers you uh, features like auto scaling as well coming on to the on premise deployment so in the on premise deployment your mule runtime where you deploy your application lies on your on premise servers or your on premise infrastructure um inside on premise also the control plane uh, on premise or on cloud depending on the customer requirements so we have something called as hybrid where control plane lies on the cloud but the uh, runtime plane lies on the um, on the on premise servers only so within this on premise um, setup um, a customer has to manually set up all the servers and he has to manage all the infrastructure part he has to take care of setting up servers deploying the application if there is a need of clustering and everything he has to uh, customer should have uh, some in um, in house expertise in all this setting up requirements due to this uh, like this uh, this could be a very um, cumbersome process to manually set up everything on your on premise infrastructure then we also come up with runtime fabric which solves a lot of these problems with runtime fabric it is also a kind of hybrid model because your control plane lies on the cloud itself so mulesoft uh, we have a mulesoft hosted control plane but the infrastructure lies on customer uh, cu uh, the infrastructure is hosted by customer only so this um, uh, run uh, your runtime plane is as the runtime plane is hosted by customer it could be hosted either on any private cloud or maybe um, bare metal or your um, any virtual machines that depends upon the customer requirement as well we will go through it in detail in uh, upcoming slide so basically this runtime fabric offers you all the features which is provided by cloud hub like isolation zero downtime and auto scaling along with your own uh, customer hosted infrastructure so in businesses where you want all the cloud hub like features but on the same time you want your own infrastructure because of security purposes maybe or maybe you already have a private cloud maybe all your applications are already on some as cloud and you don't want to go with the cloud hub deployment then you can definitely uh, come across this uh, runtime fabric so in businesses like finance and insurance where all these security purposes are of a lot of concern they can opt out for this uh, they can opt for this runtime fabric deployment let's just move uh, forward just um, in case of any questions comment down in the chat window our team will look into that okay so now let's just start with the runtime fabric as we already discussed uh, i'll give you the brief again runtime fabric is a deployment model where your runtime plane is customer hosted but your control plane is mulesoft hosted so uh, coming to the um, architecture part runtime fabric is a clustered container service that automates the deployment and orche orchestration of your mule applications and gateway to any private cloud infrastructure as i told it could be azure aws or google or maybe it could be on premise data centers like your own virtual machines or bare metal um we have uh, i'll just move forward only so um as we already discussed rtf is a shared responsibility so all the components which you can see in uh, the blue marked uh, boxes these are mulesoft provided these are ma completely managed by mulesoft we have the mulesoft anypoint control plane your runtime is also provided by mulesoft but the other things like the host infrastructure storage or metrics monitoring proxies part is given by customer is managed by customer now uh, for um, 
you can also see for the communication of your uh, any point control plane to your runtime plane uh, yeah, a secure protocol which which is amqp is being used so the communication between your control plane and runtime plane is completely secured via this protocol coming forward let's start with the architecture part so here we will go into detail how a runtime fabric is being set up on an overall view runtime fabric is a collection of virtual machines these virtual machines can either be a controller or a worker node basically a controller node is just a worker uh, is a machine where, uh, which is responsible for load balance i mean purpose will be controlling all the workers it will be distributing the traffic among your workers and it will be also responsible for all the distributed storage database so that is the work of the controller node then we also have the workers node worker nodes are where your actual code is being um, deployed so worker nodes are the machines where your actual code will be deployed so as you can see here in the uh, here we have two worker nodes so um, you can have your uh, replicas of your applications deploy deployed among this worker nodes so in case of failure of any of these node if your application replicas is deployed on the other node you will still get the high availability that is also one of the feature of runtime fabric so we get the feature of high availability in case of any failure you have replicas deployed on another node so uh, your application will be up and running at every point uh, let's also discuss a brief about uh, runtime fabric operating models as we uh, discuss that you can either deploy your uh, runtime fabric on self managed kubernetes or your bare metal or vm the self managed kubernetes part is much more flexible and cheaper because you here you uh, here the uh, private clouds like azure aws google uh, already provides with uh, all the infrastructure all the kubernetes infrastructure so you don't have to take care of uh, uh, you don't have to look into the uh, managing of your kubernetes cluster you have to worry about um, uh, any of the server setup cluster setup or anything it it will be automatically taken care by your private cloud um, uh, vendor so it's much more cheaper and flexible so that is why for this particular meetup we will be focusing on self managed kubernetes only okay um, going forward you will also see how you can yourself deploy an rtf um, you, you can set up your rtf and deploy an application over there on a self managed kubernetes uh, okay so let me um, let me go into detail of the architecture so that it's more understandable let me use the uh, diagram to show you that i hope my screen is visible right yes ma'am yeah so uh, as i mentioned we have something called as worker nodes and controller nodes so let's say we have two worker nodes here uh usually we try to have two or more worker nodes so that in case of failure we have another worker node up and running okay then we also have a controller node which is responsible for all the admin purposes as we already talked about it so inside this worker nodes your application is not directly deployed it is deployed inside something called as pods okay so pods is nothing but it's an logical host which is um, which is like the smallest deployable unit inside a kubernetes uh, architecture so pod is the smallest deployable um, unit it uh, it is a logical host so it has its own ip address so you can have multiple pods inside a worker node and inside that pod your app container will run uh, so you will run a container here inside a uh, inside a pod and in that container your app will be there okay so what does i meant by a container container is nothing but it it's a packaged software unit where your code is packaged along with your uh, all your dependencies libraries so um, uh, uh, so when you deploy a container it doesn't matter what which host it is uh, independent of the host your application will be deployed 
and deployed uh, accordingly okay so as i mentioned we have containers and inside that containers we have the application so say i have my application uh, just a second so say i have my application one deployed here inside pod one and say application two deployed here and i can also have replicas of my application deployed among different worker nodes so for example your application one is deployed here as well as here so if you will uh, on the clustering mode for this application your worker nodes uh, your applications can communicate with each other so in case of one uh, if your uh, one application fails due to any any reason your second application will be up and running so this is the way you will get the high availability feature here uh, coming back to the diagram if you can see here um, we have the anypoint manager rtf control plane which is basically your uh, control plane uh, which is hosted by mulesoft and on the lower part of the diagram we have the eks control plane eks here is nothing but uh, it's elastic kubernetes service which is the kubernetes service provided by aws so in this kubernetes service we has three nodes up and running and if you can see app 3 mule app 3 is deployed on node 2 as well as node 3 so all the all the shared state between this app 2 and app 3 is already maintained and um, in case you want to persist this shared state you have to also uh, deploy a persistent gateway along with these nodes so persistent gateway is nothing but it take cares of deploying um, it take cares of uh, all the persistent storage if you want so in case you want persistent storage for your object stores virtual machines or even storing the application state persistently you must um, apply this persistent gateway explicitly okay so what else we have here you can also see on the left hand side we have something called as ingress load balancer and an ingress controller so this ingress controller is the is the entry point to the cluster where your uh, uh, all your outbound data will pass through this ingress controller and this ingress controller will take care of routing all your uh, all your um, all your traffic to the particular pod okay so uh, also on side we have a mule runtime registry so this registry is nothing but it's kind of a repository where all your mule runtimes will be placed so whenever you deploy an application and you mention that you have to deploy it on this particular runtime it will automatically pull that particular runtime and your application will be deployed going forward uh, we have talked about ingress a little bit so uh, as i mentioned ingress is the part which is responsible for load balancing and the traffic among your pods so whenever you uh, you set up a kubernetes cluster along with that you also set up an ingress controller so that you can allow the outbound traffic to uh, to be um, to reach your uh, inside network okay um that was all about the uh, all about the architecture part in a case of any questions to let us know um also let me just quickly finish up with the advantages and limitations and after that we will uh, directly move forward to the implementation part of this okay so as we discussed uh runtime fabric provides us most of the um benefits which are provided by cloud hub and as well as the on premise features so the first one is isolation between applications because all your applications are deployed inside pods and pods in itself are a logical host so um, all your resources are not being shared among the pods your pod already have its own resources and hence your application is being isolated from the other applications also here you can uh, deploy different replicas of your application and for each replica, replica you can also use different mule versions because your replica uh, all your replicas are deployed inside different containers every container has it can have its own mule runtime 
second is scaling the application across multiple replicas is very easy so you can uh, deploy a number of replicas for your mule application uh, hence uh, ensuring the scale uh, hence ensuring the scaling factor here then we also have something called as self healing so in case uh, any of your pod fails inside your uh, kubernetes structure so in self managed kubernetes uh, in case of any fail uh, failover it is taken care automatically by the kubernetes it will replace your failed pod with a new one automatically so this is the way it uh, gives us a benefit of self healing uh, property then um, uh, what else uh, this we already discussed that we can deploy our uh, um, rtf among different environments like private clouds virtual machines or bare metals let's go forward to the limitations part so um, the total no the maximum number of nodes which you can have per cluster that could be 400 this is quite a large number and i don't think so this will anyhow uh, practically matter so we have maximum number of uh, nodes as 400 per cluster then the node in in your the node type in your kubernetes cluster should be vm based though these nodes could be physical or vm based but inside a kubernetes structure for an rtf implementation they should be a virtual machine based the number of rep, maximum number of replicas per application could only be eight okay and you can deploy uh, you can have 1600 uh, time of deployments among a uh, uh, among one of your uh, runtime fabric manager then um, for one particular uh, for one particular business group uh, uh, for one uh, particular business group you can associate 100 environments to a single runtime fabric this is also i guess we in the production environment we usually have three to four uh, environments uh, sorry in in actual projects we have three to four environments so this number is also not of concern and then the business group per per one business group per org we have 50 runtime fabrics which can be associated okay so that was all about the limitation uh, let me also check the chat once if we have any questions okay uh, so someone is asking to explain more about ingress controller so as i mentioned this ingress controller is like a load balancer it is very similar to a load balancer it takes care of your um, um it takes care of mapping your outbound traffic to the internal traffic if you can see on the left hand side we have a configuration of this ingress uh, controller so here if you can see the host is myapp.com so you will call this uh, app, uh, host which is myapp.com it will automatically map your external dns to your application pod which is deployed as service name my app internal service so it is nothing but kind of a gateway come load balancer for your kubernetes cluster okay uh, let's just move forward with the installation part so for the installation and setup here what we are doing is we are uh, we are setting up a rtf uh, on a self managed kubernetes and for that purpose we are using private cloud as azure my fellow host dipankar will be um, will be showing you the installation part of it and let's just quickly get started over to you dipankar thank you mahek uh, let me just share my screen. Uh, is my screen visible? Uh, yes. All right. So for installation, right, uh, and setting up of, uh, there are a few prerequisites. So first and foremost, you need to have the access to the AnyPoint platform. You need to have the access to the Mu license key for your business group. You need to have a Kubernetes cluster service. Uh, you can use uh, Azure, Amazon, Google, or OpenShift, uh, anyone you prefer. Alongside that, uh, you need to have your business group should have a Platinum or Titanium subscription. Then only you will be able to have the option to generate uh, create an RTF, basically. Then on your local machine, you need to have some command line tools available, uh, you, like kubectl, which is basically used to manage your Kubernetes service. 
the RTF CTL or Helm, which is basically used to manage runtime fabric, and then any authenticator or CLI which is used to connect to a Kubernetes service provider. Like for Amazon, we have IAM authenticator. For Azure, we have Azure CLI. Uh, these are the few prerequisites that you need to have. After that, uh, now talking about kubectl. So what is kubectl? Since we've been using it, right? So kubectl is basically a command line tool which we use to manage, operate, and deploy our application on Kubernetes cluster. So basically, through a command line, we can interact with the Kubernetes server and perform operations there. Then moving on. Sorry to interrupt the banker. Is looking smaller here. Can you try resharing once? All right. Yeah. Meanwhile, also for all this installation part, Avnish has shared one vlog with you. So we have um, we have uh, we have all the commands which we need for this installation uh, in this vlog. So you can just look onto that if you want to set this RTF yourself. Uh, is screen good now? Yeah, seems better. All right. So moving on to RTF CTL. So RTF CTL is basically the MuleSoft command line tool, which we use for runtime fabric management. We can basically use it to get the status of the fabric, perform heap dumps, manage its proxy, manage its properties, and also manage the Mule license on which our runtime fabric is working on. So that's all about the basic command line tools that we've been using. And moving on to the steps of installation, right? So first and foremost, you need to choose your managed Kubernetes service. There are various options as Meg told earlier. So just choose a preferred one. Then we need to configure a Kubernetes cluster. Then we need to install runtime fabric on that cluster and then configure it. Seems simple, right? Let's see how it is done. Moving on to the demo part. Okay. So I talked about uh, regarding those commands, right? That we need some CLI tools. To install those, we have some. We need some. Uh, we I have used some chocolatey uh, utility. So the commands for these should be available to you on the link that Avnish just shared with you. So using that, you need to install the chocolatey utility, the cube CTL, RTF CTL, and if you're using Azure, so the Azure CLI. Once you're done with this, you need to open your PowerShell in administrator mode. After that, uh, first you, and foremost, you need to log into the Azure. So Azure login is basically the command that you need to use to connect to the Azure. On my system, I have already done it, so I won't be performing it again, but that's the command. Once done with that command, we need to create a cluster. So on creating a cluster uh, on Azure, each every cluster or any service that you create, right? It needs to have a resource group. So for that, just log into your Azure portal. Once there, we have an option for resource groups. Just click on a resource group. Click on create and just mention the resource group name and click on review plus create. Once done, uh, you will see the resource groups here on the portal. I will be using this meetup demo resource group for this uh, POC. So make sure where I on the commands, make sure to see where I am using this, uh, the name for this. So once you have created a resource group, then it comes to the task for creating a cluster. So to create a cluster, we again have a command that is az, which is basically Azure, AKS create. You need to mention the resource group name. I have mentioned it as meetup demo. The name of the uh, cluster that you're going to create. So it's CC meetup demo. The amount of nodes that you want to assign to the basically the cluster to, but you can increase that. Uh, you need to generate the SHS keys. So command for that. You need to mention the Kubernetes version and then uh, the size. So basically the size of the nodes. Azure provides various sizes. Uh, the standard DS2 is basically the most preferred one for the simple POCs and regular work. But depending on your use case, uh, you can see the pricing and choose accordingly. So if you see, once you run this command, uh, it will basically create a cluster on Azure and it will return you all the configs for it to that cluster. I won't be, uh, again, I won't be showing this command because running this command takes certain times around five to six minutes. So since we don't have a lot of time on the meetup, I won't be running this command live, but I can, sh I've just run it beforehand. As you can see, once it is great, it shows all the days regarding to a cluster. And similar things can be seen on a portal for the Kubernetes service. As you see, a CC meetup demo, Kubernetes service is live. 
All right. Once done with this, then we need our cube CTL that we installed to connect to this uh, disk cluster that we just created, right? So for that, we have a command called get az get credentials, which will basically set a Kubernetes cluster to this one that we just created CC meetup demo. Just run that command and it will change the config to point to the CC meetup demo. Uh, the command running might take some time depending on the system. And yeah, as you see, its current context is pointed to the CC meetup demo. Once done with this, you can check if it uh, the cube seat tail or the server is connected or not. Just run cube CTL get nodes. And depending on the amount of nodes that you des uh, described when creating the cluster, you should be able to see the nodes. So if I do this, uh, we can see I got two nodes as I mentioned that. Once done with this, then there comes the part of RTF. Then we need to create the RTF. So log into the AnyPoint platform, go to the runtime manager, uh, and then on the runtime manager, we have option for runtime fabrics. Uh, just let it load. All right. So click on runtime fabrics and click on create runtime fabric. So you need to provide the name for this. I will be giving it meetup demo. And then where are we going to install this RTF, right? So since we're using Azure, I will just select Azure Kubernetes service and click on next. Accept the responsibility and our meetup demo RTF runtime fabric has been created. Now on to the installation. Since uh, I've installed RTF CTL, I'll be using the RTF CTL command line tool for the installation. If you have gone with Helm, just follow the steps for the Helm. But since we are going with RTF CTL, uh, I will be following these. So we have an activation key basically for activating this RTF. So go to that uh, PowerShell and use command RTF CTL validate and then the key. This will basically validate this key from the mule so that uh, and do all the validations required. By the time uh, it is doing this validations, right? Uh, what we can do? Okay, it's almost done. We can, one second. So it does certain checks like uh, region and endpoints, if all are able to be connected properly. And it removes, uh, it create, while the time it validates site, it creates certain namespaces that it needs to remove later on. So yeah, it has validated it. Once validation is done, we can proceed with the installation. So command is similar, just instead of validate, we use RTFCTL install. So it will start installing the runtime fabric components. All right. Uh, running this command will take certain time. Uh, most of the times you would see it would run a lot faster on a CLI, but on the platform itself, even if it says installed successfully on this command line, it will uh, show not active yet. And just a uh, thing, uh, don't progress ahead. Uh, if you're doing it by own, don't progress ahead. Uh, status as active here because uh, it won't work basically. Usually this step can take like from two minutes to five to six minutes depending on the latency. Let's see how much time this takes. Okay. As you can see, we uh, on a CLI, we have got the runtime fabric is ready, but on our platform itself, it's still uh, not there. So it will take certain time. Uh, another thing that you can do through CLI is check the status uh, to make sure. So RTF CTL status, just do that command and it will check the status of the runtime fabric. Okay. 
if any one of you has any questions till that point please mention that in the chat and the guys in the audience like himanshu and ishilvit will try to answer you there so yeah everything is active here so right now we just need to wait for it to be shown as active on the runtime manager all right by the time what we can do so since we are getting rtf we are obviously going to deploy an application there so i will just show you a sample application that i will be deploying on the rtf after this uh, nothing uh, fancy just a simple application with two flows uh, one for health uh, health slash health app and one for say hello and uh, let it load it's pretty simple uh, flows and what we will be doing is like uh, i have set up diff uh, different transform messages to result as different payload depending on so that once we t when we test the application right we can check it is working properly so we have just have these two messages like hi attendees the api is up and running for get health application and for say hello we just have a query parameter that will return hello with the name that we mentioned there a simple application going uh, going back let's see Okay, it will still take some time. So, meanwhile, in order to have the your RTF set up, in order to see your runtime fabrics option in your Anypoint platform, you must have a valid license for runtime fabrics as well. So, runtime fabric is a paid service. So, you guys must have a valid license for this in order to implement runtime fabric. All right so okay let's do this so i showed you creating a, a cluster using cli right so let me show you how you can do that using the portal itself if you don't want to create a service using cli by the time the rtf comes up so on your azure portal if you want to get a service uh, on azure service uh, go to the kubernetes service if you're not seeing it here just search it on the above and it will uh, come there since i'm use i've done practical uh, multiple times so it is showing as recent but if it's not showing to you just search it here as kubernetes service and click on create so you have multiple options just use create a kubernetes cluster uh, let it load all right so once it is loaded, uh, similar to what we said using command, you need to uh, put a resource group here on which this cluster would be created. So let me put as that RTF demo. Then the preset configuration, cluster name. Uh, let it. Let me give as a demo cluster two. All right. Then oh, you can select the region in which you want to uh, create the cluster. You could select the availability zones. And then the pricing tier for the cluster. You can have free, but like other things would be charged, but you can also have the standard option. Depending on the use case, you can uh, select these preferences. You can choose the Kubernetes version and then the node size. We set it as standard DS2 V2, but depending on your option uh, use case, you can change size here. Azure provides multiple options, but the pricing and the vCPUs, RAMs, and data disk allotted to them very accordingly okay let me refresh this page also once more and let's go back to here so once you have selected this uh, the desired vm size just select it you can set the node count like what you want to be the and then just review plus create there are some advanced option like node pools assess networking integrations advanced and you can also provide some tags like these are more of like if you're working on a zoo portal and you want to manage it right so tags can be assigned or uh, you can decide assign these accordingly if required but if you're just doing a demo poc you don't you don't need to do this just set up these things and click on review plus create one more thing uh on azure you might get a uh, like for when you create a trial account you get fifteen thousand free credits but uh depending if, uh, if you already have a cluster on online and if you try to get another one, you might get a uh, charge for that. So make sure for that if you don't want to get charged. And now uh, our RTF has come online. It is set as active. 
So next thing you need to do is to associate it with an environment. On which environment, like uh, you have multiple environments in your business group, right? So for which environment will the RTF be available to deploy the applications on? So I will set it to a sandbox and just click on apply allocations. So once you have done this, so for applications that are being deployed on sandbox environment, you will see the options to deploy on RTF. Let me show you that. So if you go to deploy application in deployment target, you will see the runtime fabric and the RTF that you have created. All right. So once you've done this, right? Another thing uh, like what Mehek mentioned earlier that we need to have an ingress controller to basically manage the out traffic that is coming to our API, right? So we need to apply that by default. If you go to inbound traffic, it will show the, this error. So I will be using NGINX controller to manage the ingress, uh, ingress uh, right? So uh, we have a command for that kubectl apply and then the ingress controller. All right. So if you one more thing that I need to mention here. So they have part of this right when we're trying to get RTF. There are a few steps that you need to follow. Oh, one second. Oh, my command got misplaced. OK, let me do never mind. Oh, going back to my talk. So when you're trying to create the RTF, right? So there are a few steps that you need to follow. So when you, I was going to just try to add the ingress controller, right? But I'm going to uh, expose this RTF to the outbound, but I still not have verified this RTF with the mule, right? So I, if I, even if I deploy an application, how will mule verify it is correct? So before you apply the ingress, you need to remember to always apply the mule license key. So to do that, what I will be doing, I will be reading the license key from a file. I have uh, added on my license key to a file that I've mentioned in my system.32 folder. And I'm going to read it from there and store it in a variable and apply the license key. So the command for that is RTF CTL. Uh, heck here you can see it. Apply mu license. And then I will be mentioning my variable that I just created. So encoded text. Another important thing, your mu license should be base 64 encoded. You cannot just directly uh, apply your license. Your license needs to be base 64 encoded. And once you have applied the mu license, you can proceed with uh, adding the ingress controller. Oh, let me get to that command first. So this is the link that you guys have been shared with and all the commands that I'm currently performing are avail available here along with the screenshots that you will see. So let me get to the command. So we have the command is kubectl apply and then we have the link to the GitHub where the ingress controller nginx that I'm going to use is available. So just copy that command, apply it here. and our ingress controller would be created. So you can also verify this on the portal itself. So just go to portal. Let me go to the cluster that you have created. And in the services and ingress, uh, let it load. You will see the in NGINX controller. It has two things, the cluster IP, controller controls the cluster IP and also the load balancer. So both of these will be installed here. You can verify these things. So once you have added that, uh, you need to have the configurations for the ingress, right? So you need to create a YAML file for this. I have already created one, a sample one. So the metadata and then the rules. So the what should be the host, what should be the path, and what should be the port number. This is a sample ingress YAML file that you can use. So I will be applying this ingress file uh, these configurations to the ingress controller that I just created. So what I can need to do, we have the command kubectl apply minus f ingress.yml. 
this is the basically the path to the file. For most of the files that I am using, they are already present in the system 32 folder that our admin uh, PowerShell or CMD works on. But if your file is not there, just make sure you put the whole path to that file. So if it is in the some C drive and some other folder, so mention the C and the folder path, everything. So let's apply the ingress. So once you have applied the ingress site, uh, if you go to the AnyPoint platform, you see on, on inbound traffic, the host has been updated according to the config just data just mentioned. So now we are good to deploy our application. So what we can do, go to the applications and deploy application or select a name. Let me say sample demo app it should be small and change the deployment target to the runtime fabric so meetup demo let me choose the file i have already exported that uh, file that i just showed you the application that i just showed you so now when we are deploying on runtime fabric right we have some few options here we can uh, choose amount of replicas for that application that we want to create uh, minimum is one and max you have is eight here so choose accordingly but if you want to run your application cluster mode right then you need to have at least uh, two replicas and you need to enable run runtime cluster mode you can also enforce deploying replicas across nodes so just enable that or if you want to use persistent object store you can enable that here you can uh, locate those uh, resources. So how much CPU you want to locate? What is the CPU limit for this application? And what, how much memory you want to locate? So you, all of that you can manage here. And then other than that, other options like what we have while deploying, we have the ingress, we have the properties, JVM and login. You can set it accordingly to, to your application and just click on deploy. So it will take yeah. So meanwhile, this application is deployed. You can see here we have uh, two configurations. One is reserved CPU and CPU limit. So runtime fabric has a benefit which is named as CPU bursting. So where you mention these two um, memory limits. So if your application has CPU limit of one, but reserved CPU is only of 0 0.02. In case of any overloading, in case of a high traffic, your application will automatically can use the CPU limit up to that one V core in case of these overloading things. So um, this is what is CPU bursting, which is also one of the main features of RTF. All right, uh, deploying this will uh, take certain time. So because it needs to apply on two replicas, uh, what we can do is by the time we can uh, check the namespaces. So for Azure, right, uh, when you deploy it, an applic Mule application, it basically creates a namespace for that application in which it is present. So on the portal for you on the service, just click on namespace and you will see a namespace is created. And you can also see the age 57 seconds, which is the time at which I started the deployment of the application. So let's see uh, the nodes for this application. Uh, we have a command for that at first to get the name. So namespace. So we have kubectl get namespace. Let's run that command on the PowerShell. And it will show all the namespaces for this cluster. So this is the namespace basically that we are uh, on which our mule application is being deployed. So I will copy the name. And inside the namespace, we have the pods. So kubectl. Uh, let me copy the command itself. It will be better. Uh, otherwise, it would be uh, some spacing issues can come. So, just mention the get pods, and then you need to mention the namespace in which the you need want to check the pods. Oops, command. So the namespace. So you see the app that I was going to deploy the sample demo app, it got deployed and we also have two pods for this. So that way you can confirm like see the pods. Other than that, you can also check the logs. So it would be 
kubectl logs and then the command let me also show you that so kubectl get logs then for the pod name and then the namespace for that so My bad. Oh, we don't need to have to get here. So all the logs for your application, you can see it on your CLI. All right, so we have deployed the application. We have set up the RTF, we have deployed the application. What comes the next? We need to hit it. So usually what we do, if we deploy an application cloud up, we hit this application URL, right? But if I try to hit this URL right now, it will not work. Why? Because we don't have any external DLB. So for that, we need to resolve this uh, URL to the address for the ingress. So to that, uh, we have a command called kubectl get ingress minus n namespace. What does that do? So for a particular namespace, it gives the address for the ingress. So let me do that. So we have got the address for this ingress. So uh, what we can do next, uh, just go to the, get create a curl command. And in the resolve, I will mention this here, the address. So I'm resolving this dev meetupprivate.com with port 80 to this address. And in the application, I will just add the app name that I have just created. So it is sample demo app. So, okay, let me just copy this. All right, so let's run this command. And you see, we got a response from our API. So that's basically all you need to do to set up an RTF and deploy an application on it. Okay, that's all for demo. If you have any questions, please mention that in the chat.